Welcome back to the channel. Hey, here's 10 things that you can do to improve your 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner GTX model. Follow along and I'll show you the things that I've done so far. This is the kit piece. This is my modified piece. What I did is I sanded down just about half of it and then I drilled out the holes to make this wheel more realistic. Along with that, these are the tires that I decided to use. They're a little thicker than the stock ones. I took a Dremel tool and I smoothed this out. Then I chucked this piece into the Dremel tool as well and took this edge down so that I could slide this part into here. And you say, big deal, James, why'd you do that? So I can move this in and out. I can set the wheel depth of how deep I want it in the wheel well now. And it all just snaps right in. I cut these two notches into the interior tray. And the reason why, when you look in, when you mount the hood and you have these pieces on here, and you put them in here, you can see that they interfere with the fit of the interior tub. So by cutting those two little slots, problem solved. I found that when I was test fitting the front grill, that there were some stops back there. By removing those and put the front grill in place, if you remove the stops, you can make it flush. It actually stuck out a little bit. The front grill stuck out a little bit about to there and it was kind of couldn't really get it all the way in. By removing those stops you make it fit so much better. I'm also going to paint this black and the back of the grill black so that it's not nasty looking chrome right behind the uh, radiator. I did cut away the exhaust from the rear end. See how much better that looks? Here's what it looked like before. No good. Another thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to cut the exhaust off of the exhaust header and fill the joint in between the exhaust system and that little piece of exhaust. That way it'll all be one piece. For the body, there's a few low spots here and here that need to be filled in with some putty. And also, scribe in these door lines. This is the fender, fender line. That, that line doesn't exist on the kit, so scribe that in. Also scribe a line here and here. It makes a tulip panel, separate piece on the real car. Same thing over here. Leave this, that's gonna get a splotch of gold paint. But uh, scribe all your door lines real nice and deep. Make sure that this line is real good here, up to the cowl. Ejection pin marks. Here, 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 low spot, 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 low spot uneven, uneven. Fill this in with some putty. Make sure that there's no line left. This is actually visible in the in the engine bay up to about here. Make sure that's nice and smooth. It's a nasty seam here that you fill in. Fill all that with putty. Front end, 
putty, 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 putty. There's an extra piece of plastic here and here that I removed. Make it one for the torsion bar each side. And I cleaned up this area here. The bottom of the brake booster, I filled that in with putty. It still needs to be sanded. So when you look underneath the car, you'll see this and it'll be flat. The oil filter, filled that in with putty as well. I highly recommend that you find yourself some good reference pictures on the internet. I found these pictures very valuable. I plan to do a final mock-up real soon of all the parts that I've modified. I still want to do a few more little things to it, but I'll keep you apprised of what those are. In the meantime, good luck with all your builds, and I look forward to watching all your videos. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. Bye.